how do you get into shape? Now, how do I know how to get into shape? Because I competed in two bodybuilding competitions when I was 31 and 32, and I was in great shape. Um, and now at the age of 48, after being somewhat overweight for like 15 years, maybe 50, 60 pounds overweight, I lost it all and I have gotten back into shape and I'm doing another competition. So basically what you want to do is, obviously you want to <laughs> work out because you know, it's basically three things. Number one is your training, right? So you need to train and I would say 80% should be with weights and 20% should be cardio, to keep it simple. So what would I do? So I go to the gym, I, let's say, work out with weights for 45 minutes to an hour and immediately after I do 20 minutes of cardio because I'm already in the fat burning phase and I do this every day. Just 20 minutes of cardio, you can do 30 minutes, but 20 minutes is enough in the start. Secondly, and this is 80% of nutrition, of your success is nutrition. So, you want to be high protein, low carb, uh, you want to be low fat, low calories. Now, how does this work? So what I do is, I usually have three meals and three protein shakes. Okay, you can uh, argue this is bad or whatever, but the point is, I'm seeing results and I've gotten into shape. And I'll add some pictures maybe later on. So basically what you want to do is, it's calories in, calories out. So let's say a man needs 3,000 calories per day to function. Meaning, you walk, your body temperature, the blood flow, just the, the expenditure of your energy each day is 3,000 calories. Now what you do is, let's say, you reduce it by 500 calories by cutting some food. Let's say you eat less, okay? You eat less calories. And let's say you work out because, you know, let's say you're training. So now what happens is you have a thousand deficit and one or 3,500 calories equals one pound of fat you see this is something you should know so basically what you want to do is you want to work out you don't burn as much energy in each initially so you can work out for an hour and you only burn 500 calories but then you eat Ben and Jerry's ice cream and all of a sudden you add a thousand calories okay so the working out was almost pointless at this point so what you want to do is you want to make sure you read the labels and you only eat, this is your maintenance, and then you go below your maintenance and you work out. And the more muscle you build eventually, the more energy you will need to maintain the muscle and so forth. And that's why you want to have a deficit. So here, let's say you have, let's say a thousand deficit Okay, let's say you have a thousand calories deficit. Basically, after three or four days, you would lose a pound of fat. And it's a mathematical, you know, calculation. And most people, they don't know what they're doing. They just eat and guess and, you know, and, and then they, you know, they say, oh, I'm gonna have a salad, I'm gonna have a Caesar salad. Did you know that a Caesar salad, because of the dressing, is a thousand calories and you might as well eat four donuts at 250 calories each, and you have the same amount of calories that you put into your body. So you're better off eating a donut here and there, but making sure that you, you know, know how much calories you consume. And as long as you're in a deficit, you will lose weight, you will lose fat, because your body needs to burn it off. For women, let's say the maintenance level is maybe 2,000 calories, okay? So men, let's say 3,000, you have to kind of figure out how old you are, your activity level, how heavy you are, how tall you are. Each one, each person is a little bit different, but just in general for you to understand. So what I do too is here, um, you know, you want to have low carbs. You know, I don't want to say keto or, or no carbs because carbs are important. 
Uh, and you don't have to cut carbs. But initially, let's say for the first two weeks, if you eliminate most of the carbs, you will get some results. You will get some, some momentum to get started. So what you want to do is, you want to have maybe three smaller meals, or the way I see it is, you have, let's say, one source of protein, let's say meat, like steak, chicken, or fish, and then you have, you could have rice, which is carbs, or you just cut the rice in the beginning, and just have either vegetables or salad. Okay, so what you should do is you, you, you make small changes. Let's say you drink, uh, you know, uh, some soda, like a Coke. Instead of drinking a soda, which is, let's say, two, 300 calories, you switch it out with water. So you save 200 calories. Then let's say usually you would have a steak and french fries. So what you do is you switch out the french fries with vegetables or salad because they have a lot less calories. And you make sure you don't get oil, you get like uh, balsamic vinegar or some like light uh, dressing that has less calories. And this way, just by switching out, let's say, noodles, pasta, bread, uh, just all the, 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 the heavy carbs, you switch them out with vegetables or salad, then you're fine. Usually what bodybuilders do is they don't have any fruit because fruit is carbs, is sugar, and usually that adds to their, you know, that spikes the insulin. And when insulin is high because you ate just a lot of carbs, your body cannot burn fat. So you want to make sure that your insulin stays low so that's when your body can actually burn fat. So as long as you don't spike your insulin by eating a whole bunch of sugar, uh, your body's not capable of burning fat. Simple as that. So the only fruit you can eat are berries, blueberries, strawberries, and raspberries. And I would eat them in the morning, maybe with some oatmeal, before you work out or after you work out, either one of those. Other than that, I would have maybe around your workout, have some carbs, otherwise I would have no carbs or zero carbs. But in the end, as I said, you can eat carbs, it's not the enemy, you just wanna make sure you eat below your maintenance level that you burn. It's actually quite simple. Now, the third part is uh, your hormones. Okay, and here, uh, obviously, what you, what you want to consider is, if you're a man over 40, you want to go on TRT, testosterone replacement therapy. So as you know, we're young, we have a high testosterone level till the age of 25, and then it slowly goes down, 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 a percentage each year till you're 40, and then you have less energy, you sleep worse, you, 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 um, you have a hard time to recover, and so forth. So by adding some testosterone into your system with like a TRT, you can get this from a doctor prescribed, it's actually very beneficial for your health. You have more energy, you recover faster, you sleep better, you build muscle faster, you burn fat faster, and so forth. And it can be at a very low a dose. So once you, you, you incorporate that, it will make your results so much easier and faster. And then the other thing that I was talking about is insulin. So with insulin, meaning you eat carbs, insulin go up. Fat burning, not possible. You have no carbs, okay, very simple, no carbs. Insulin stays low, fat burning, possible. Simple as that. So technically, you want to have you want to reduce the amount of carbs. And one of the famous bodybuilders, um, uh, Milo Sarchev said, if you have more than 10% body fat and you can't see your six pack, then you're considered fat. <laughs> so up to that point, you should basically go almost like on a keto diet, have no carbs. And then once you have a certain, once you're lean to a certain degree, then you can incorporate carbs as a fuel source but you're maintaining your weight. But if you want to lose fat and build muscle at the same time, I would suggest that you uh, really watch your carbs and go 
you, like you don't need extra energy because think about that your body already has energy stored as fat right so whenever you have not enough energy he has to take it from somewhere he takes it from here but if you add extra fuel there's no need for the body to take the fat right so then it takes it where it's easiest it comes from the food so you will not lose any fat you will just burn what you eat okay so if you want to burn fat from your body you need to force your body to use that now how do you do that for example you do cardio and it can be you know 30 minutes 45 minutes on an empty stomach first thing in the morning your body has no chance but to take the energy after it slept you know 10 hours 12, you know or, or hasn't eaten for 10 or 12 hours it it has to take the energy from somewhere so where is it going to take it from it's going to take it from the stored fat uh, and that's why cardio on an empty stomach is most ideal to burn fat it doesn't mean that you won't burn fat if you keep your overall calories low and you do cardio anyway but this is a lot more efficient you burn three times as more fat than if you were let's say eating all day and then in the evening you do some cardio okay so we have training heavy weight training uh, and this is something where you try to increase the weight you know go between 8 and 12 reps go up and up and up and then also you want to um, let's say do three exercises for example at you know three four sets per muscle group each and I would work out every single day you know you start let's say with day one where you do legs day two you do chest and arms or for example day three you do back and shoulders huh? and then what do you do you start again with day one day two and if you need a day break in between you take the day off but the day off doesn't mean you don't do anything then you go for a walk you go for a bike ride you do an hour of cardio uh, you know you do something so you wouldn't brush your teeth either like not brush your teeth either you you brush your teeth every day and for me personally I go to the gym first thing in the morning I get up I get dressed I don't even think about it I just go straight to the gym and this way it's done it's checked off and the gym should be as important as any other business meeting that you have and also and, and this is the most important thing in my opinion you need a goal and a plan so people who plan are four times as successful as people who don't plan so what you want to do is you want to set a specific date okay and let's say the state is somewhere in three or four months okay and you say to you okay for the next three or four months till you know first of October okay whatever I want to be X amount of pounds or I want to have a body fat percentage of 10% or I want to do this fitness competition or I want to do this photo shoot or something like that you need a specific goal because if you don't have a goal you will lose sight and you know then you're like oh should I cheat on my diet should I not cheat on my ah oh, who cares there's there's no point it's the point is also you don't have to be on a diet your whole life and forever there's times where you have to work and there's times where you can kind of let go a little bit so what you need to do is you need to make a pact with yourself where you say okay for the next three or four months I'm gonna work out every day I'm gonna go on a diet I'm not gonna eat any chocolate or drink any alcohol or do you know you know sweets or whatever it is that you like most and then after when you're done you can you know eat your chocolate again or something like that so it's just you you, you set a specific time frame where you plan it out and you say you're committed and you have a specific goal a date with a specific purpose and this is going to be your driving force now another thing is okay let's say you weigh 200 pounds okay and there's two people who weigh 200 pounds one person weighs 200 pounds and has 25% body fat 
The other person weighs, has 10% body fat. You will see the difference because that person looks muscular, looks lean. That person looks kind of, you know, out of shape or, or a little chubby. So you want to not just look at the scale, but you want to say, okay, this here means 10% body fat means he has 20 pounds of fat and 180 pounds of muscles, tissue, bones of non-fat tissue. In this case here, he has, um, you know, uh, 50 pounds of fat and 150 of non. So what you want to say in this case, let's say you're here, you're at this point and you want to get here. Well, what you need to do, you need to technically lose 30 pounds of fat, okay, and gain 30 pounds of muscle. I don't know if that's realistic or doable, but you see the logic? So you could say, I want to lose, let's say, 30 pounds of fat, and I want to gain 10 pounds of muscle. In the end, you will lose 20 pounds, okay? Because, it, you know, you lose more fat and you will gain some muscles. But you can't just go by the scale alone. You need to look at what is your body fat percentage and what is your, you know, what is the rest. And based on that, you can set a specific goal. You can say, okay, I need to lose 30 pounds of fat. So if I, let's say every week, lose one pound of fat, that would be 30 weeks or something like that because it's three and a half thousand calories that need to be in a deficit. So, uh, oh, okay, no. So in that case, let's say we'll make it in half the time. I want to lose two pounds of fat. So I want to be in a deficit of 7,000 calories because three and a half thousand calories equals one pound of fat. So 7,000 calories equals two pounds of fat. So in 15 weeks, I can lose this amount of fat. You see, you see the logic? So you can calculate and you can make sure you know where you're at and where you stand. And the more you work out with you know, weight training, and it's not like you have to work out like a maniac, but you need to work out with heavy weights. You do some of the exercises, you know, like the basic exercises like squats, because they help to just get into. See, I used to be an aerobics teacher. I used to be a two times Swiss champion. I was in the world championship in aerobics. I taught aerobics for, for five years. There were women in my class, they looked the same a year after they were in my class because they did not follow any of these things. They just thought, okay, I'll do an hour of aerobics and that should do it. No, it doesn't. You, you need to understand that your body, your shape is formed by your muscles, not by your fat. So the more muscles you have, the better shape you have, the better you look. And muscle mass is smaller than fat mass. So by gaining weight, muscle weight, which is heavier and losing fat, you will actually look slimmer, okay? So that's a, that's a logic you should consider too. So that's why uh, you need to make sure you, you follow the nutrition and 80%, let me tell you, 80% of your success is nutrition, obviously combined with the weight training. And when you look at women who are in really good shape, for example, they all do squats, lunges, leg exercises, and so forth. And, and they work with weights. Women are afraid to get too bulky, but they're not even physically able to, become, to get too bulky. Uh, it takes them like 10 years of, of, of you know, training before they you know, basically look like, a, like half a man. So you need to not be afraid of building muscle as a woman and uh, do a little less cardio, do more weight training, and you will see how your body changes. Anyway, I hope this little explanation will help you to get into shape. Uh, if you go on my TikTok, Norman Vick, uh, you will see how I, uh, pro I'm progressing right now for my competition. And I wish you all the best. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Take care.